All right. Hi there. I might as well start early. I don't see what the point. It's only like, what, 20 seconds or something. Uh, great to see you. Um, hi, Harold Bosma. Hi, Charles Zatora. Um, yeah, Charles, I'll, uh, since you were mentioning that um, you're going to uh, uh, leave half, uh, half an hour, like you're leaving at uh, 7.30 your time to go to the airport, I'll start the trivia relatively quickly. I'll wait a, a little tiny bit to see if anybody else is going to pop on. Um, yeah, it is, it got to the, okay. I mean, this is the way it is. I mean, with these history heroes, uh, trivia things, I mean, some are going to be really easy and some are going to be, you know, pretty darn hard. Um, and a part of me was like, oh gosh, what's the point in me even, um, entering them in the comments things. As soon as I start popping them in, you guys are going to clue in right away, but that's the way it goes. Please let me know how your week's been going. I know that, uh, I don't know what you've been up to, Harold Bosma, but uh, Charles Latour has been playing uh, his graveyard, excuse me, the graveyard raid uh, uh, miniature scenario, which has been absolutely awesome to watch. Um, yeah, so I'll just I'll kind of get ready with the History Heroes thing, and then we'll go from there. Um, and I'll let you, yeah, I'm just, uh, yet again, I um, printed out... Um, I just remove uh, the links on the thing so I can go uh, down this piece of paper to kind of hopefully remember what to talk about. Uh, Harold Bosman says, great week, have four, uh, uh, great week, have war for Turkish liberation on the table. Cool. That sounds really interesting. Good morning, Willie Marins. Hello from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Great to see you. So we will start the trivia thing off in a bit. I'm not trying to handicap. Um, oh, s &T number 308. Is that so is that I, I'm not... Um, Please let me, darn it, I'm not saying, <laughs> I was just speaking of the devil. Good morning, Meandry Mike, great to see you. I was just saying, I'm not going to try to start the trivia early to try to handicap Meandry Mike because he's so far ahead of, on points. I wasn't doing that. I was just trying to, like I said, I'm just trying to get it done early so that way uh, Charles Latora can can hopefully uh, uh, chime in before it goes, uh, before he takes off to the airport. <laughs> Uh, Harold Bosma, please let me know. I don't know uh, much about uh, SNT. So 308 sounds like a pretty uh, big number. I don't, but if they started in the 70s, maybe not. I don't know how many times this is released. So is that a, is that a current edition? Um, uh, Harold Bosma, yeah. Oh, thank you for that. I know that bit, but that's all I know. Um, um, yeah, that's all I, I really know about that. Okay, we're going to start off with the History Heroes thing before, like I said, I'll keep yabbering away there and uh, forget to uh, talk about it. But I will say this on a side note, Willie Maris. I did when I was saying last week about, you know, uh, you ever popping on over 2018. Thank you, Harold Bosma. Um, about ever popping on over. I, I really do mean it because uh, there's two things to think about. One, there's Can Games in, in May. So there's the Victoria Day long weekend, which I think you'd, enjoy seeing and there's also gilbert collins maybe you want to go and have a little chit chat with him there he's there every year um then there's also th but that ends at the end of december here in ottawa the war uh the war museum there the um the war games exhibit of course we'd also have to chit chat on live stream to find out if uh, you know uh, we want to interact <laughs> live or whatever you know what i mean proper but i'm just saying it's still out there please i mean this is what we're here for for crying out loud Okay, let's go off with the um, the history th heroes thing. And uh, like I said, it's going to be I think uh, who's ever got the quickest connection, you know, back to me kind of thing. I think is going to uh, get the thing because I can't see how how in the world you're not going. I don't even know where to start. So here we go. I'm going to pop on the very first one. Um, geez, man. Uh, it's the close, the best one I can give you. That's the easy, uh, the hardest clue, if you want to call it that. It's uh, in 19, and I'll pop it in. Sorry, in 1918, I was forced to abdicate and went into exile in the Netherlands. That's the closest or the hardest uh, one I could find. I, I didn't really know what else to do. Um, oops, I got the wrong one here. Yeah, uh, Meandering Mike, it was neat to know. I'm going to find out. I want to know uh, more about that combat uh, system um, that you were showing there because you've mentioned it a few times there, the history, uh, the historical board game 
uh, company. Is that what they're called? I hope. Um, comments. Uh, boom! You got it, Harold Bosma. And it's awesome because, uh, and, and so is Willie Marins. But hey, Harold Bosma, you got it first. And it was weird because when you were saying at the very beginning there, at the, at the beginning of the stream, Harold Bosma, and yeah, we'll go to the pictures then. I'll uh, hold on. I'm going to remove the banner since you don't have to see that. Yeah, like I said, I knew this was going to be a dandy quick one. Um, I was thinking uh, when you were like, oh, I'll give it my best. I was thinking, gosh, I want to give you a, a hint saying, well, um, he's closer than you think. Or, you know, the, uh, because they're obviously German. But um, that's not the case. So anyways, we're going to show the picture here. Oh, good. I've already got it set out here. But anyways, um, I'm, I'm typing. There you go. Uh, uh, so maybe that was the quicker way to do it. Um, yeah, we'll go to the thing here. Um, yeah, man, you make uh, when you were showing the unboxing thing. I just, it, I, I've never played that combat system before. But based on the, I think two, three times now that you've mentioned it, I'm like, well, it sounds kind of, uh, I, it seems uh, almost like an intuitive uh, um, thing to do. Harold Bosm on the phone, lots of typos. Oh, interesting. Yes, I noticed that with Charles the Torah uh, when he uh, switched uh, mobile phones. Um, I think he was having, excuse me, he was having a bit of issues uh, figuring out what he was saying. There was a few times he was like, uh, I was like, what in the world is he saying? So, okay, we're going to present the thing here. <clears throat> a window. Nope. And you didn't see it yet, you little brat. Okay, so I've got to pop it on. There we go. As an active window. Okay, I can't minimize. And then I go to here. Now I can present. Uh, Meander Mike says, I'm on a phone too, booting up computer now. Okay. Well, like you need the points, Meander Mike. My God. So there we go. Uh, yeah. Um, and oh, Jesus, I keep doing that. Uh, two backs. There we go. There we go. Um, I was Queen Victoria's eldest grandson and the last emperor and king of Prussia. I was uh, Germany's supreme commander, but the military leaders ignored me. I'd like to find out more about that. Uh, I encouraged Austria-Hungary to punish Serbia for the Archduke's assassination. I worked hard to increase the, the strength of Germany's armed forces, especially its navy. As war became a real possibility, I tried too late to stop Germany's armed mobilization. In 1918, which is the one I mentioned, I was forced to abdicate and went in exile in the Netherlands. And joker fact, the difficult birth left me with a withered left arm, which I always tried to hide. Um, I don't know if you guys th uh, think about this, uh, um, Harold Bosma Ferdinand. Um, I don't know what you, you're going to have to help me with uh, what you're mentioning, uh, what you're uh, referring to. Um, but I don't know what you guys, sometimes I, I was always wondering if, uh, I mean, I, you can't, I mean, I didn't live in his world. I don't understand his, you know, what he had to go up with, but there's been some times I'm almost like, I wonder if, um, if, um, you know, he almost embraced in a weird way, his withered arm, or like if that would have, uh, uh, made him more of a confident uh, person and so on and so forth and whatever. But I mean, I'm like, my God, you're not a psychologist. So stop getting into this. All right. So let, I'm going on to my links and, and away we go um, with that. The first thing I think we might as well get into, I'm hoping that will maybe cause a, a start a bit of a discussion is, uh, and it's also with you, Harold Bosman. So it's not, I, it's not a, now all this time, at least I did put all the sources and links in ahead of time uh, on the live stream. So I'm really happy about that. Um, is so it's not a uh, random BGG uh, board game um, uh, game geek of the uh, a week this week because uh, Harold Bosman you had mentioned a couple of weeks ago about you wanted to um, um, pull out pursuit of um, uh, glory instead of um, NATO and whatnot and then uh, I was like okay and then we were going to start talking about last week but you weren't there and I was like okay we'll wait a week. And then I was talking to Meandry Mike about uh, Paths of Glory a little bit, and it was always on his radar. So here we go. We're going to go off to that. I thought that would be a good idea to start with. Um, hold on. Um, I don't want to get rid of that link. I have a link of uh, for the Sterling Edition PDF. Harold Bosma, yes, indeed. Still the plan. Okay. So now we're going to go, and you mentioned Pursuit of Glory over Paths of Glory. But we're going to start with Paths of Glory first. I hope you don't mind. And please let me know because I'm trying to have oh, – hold on. Um, oh, yeah, I've got to make you guys tiny. There we go. Okay, now I can present. 
share the screen. Uh, Microsoft Edge tab. Boom. All right. And please let me know if you find that too small. I'm actually going to get rid of me. Hold on here. Um, there. So that way you guys can see this bigger. So I was really surprised. Meander Mike says there's also a game called Illusion Glory. Yes, Mike, thank you. And we're also going to talk about that. And we're also hopefully going to talk about Imperial Tide. I'm hoping all four to uh, wrap it in here. And it also, yet again, Meander Mike, what you were mentioning, uh, it's also connected with some of the ga uh, games we have been talking about. Because uh, so here, like it says, des uh, designer Ted Racer. So I didn't understand at when I uh, Harold Bosma was mentioning Pursuit of Glory, and we'll go off to that in a minute. I thought, therefore, that Pursuit of Glory. So here, let's go to this one, and it looks wonderful. Um, yeah, let's go to the images. You guys can see that. I hope this looks really nice. Um, and I don't mind this thing. I don't. I don't know the. I understand it's a car-driven thing, and so on and so forth. Uh, Manu Max is in Grand Illusion Mirage, of, Mirage of Glory too. I had no idea about that one, and I don't know. I didn't know about the Grand Illusion. Holy smokes! Um, what threw me for a loop? I didn't understand, guys, and uh, was that I thought Ted Racer uh, did all of the games, and that's not the case, as you guys know. Uh, and so I thought Paths of Glory was just the Western Front. And then these other ones were going to the other fronts, kind of like a la Der Weltkrieg. But it, I guess that's not the case. So I guess Paths of Glory is, um, is, um, is, is the, um, is like a, is, is the full on thing. Is that the case? I'm not really sure how this uh, full. So this one looked, I've seen this a long time ago. Actually, I think uh, dad, yes, dad versus son played this. Uh, I think actually with his son for a little bit, believe it or not. So uh, I wonder, what did you also call uh, Harold Bosmus is starting with uh, passive glory is the right basis for pursuit and illusions. So yeah, I didn't understand that. I thought, it's, like I said, I assumed that uh, Ted Racer had done all of them. And that's not the case where you can see here, per, uh, Perry Silverman did it. And this also, I started thinking about um, with Charles Latour's games, uh, the games that he loves, the Mark Simonovich, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, the X4 games. And are all those, um, Paso Glory is full European World War II. Okay, thanks. Um, I, uh, and what I, um, so let's go back to this thing here, because what I wanted to do was tie it into, uh, okay, typo, thank you. My, uh, Manny, Mike, because I was going to go with you. I was like, oh, shit, maybe I didn't uh, clue in. To... <laughs> Remember, I, I always look at you as uh, knowing way more than I do. So, and this is what, I've got this game upstairs. So this is um, the full on. So I guess kind of like the fat Paths of Glory that you were uh, mentioning. And from what I've heard, uh, I picked this one up because people said it was like Paths of Glory light. And supposedly even the... Uh, the d designer said, yeah, that's not too, I, I, I'm okay with that. Like, you, you, I'm not going to get upset if you um, mentioned this. But uh, so, uh, if, like, if anybody's played any of these games or whatever, I'd like to know. Uh, like I said, I've got this game upstairs. I'm more interested at the moment. I thought of, of trying to play, uh, I guess, um, you know, something a bit more, uh, I'm not saying it's going to be late, but something that I could actually uh, feel like I've played a, uh, the war out in like maybe an afternoon or or two or something, you know, with, with uh, somebody here. That's uh, the way I'm looking at it. Um, so that's that. Let's go back to my profile here for a second so I can take a look at what I was looking at off to the side. So what did you call that, Meandering Mike? You said there was it was Grand Illusion. Grand Illusion, eh? Ah, thanks. Whoa, what the heck is this? And there's Roger McGowan again. So you guys know about this game? I've never heard of this before. And what level, like, is this? Uh, oh, boy, this is ever, I like the, um, I, I really like the, that's really nice. Another game designed by Ted Racer. Holy smokes. So, Look, okay, because that's Ted uh, Ra Roger McGowan. Um, 
guy. So I was going to say that seems very similar um, artwork that I've seen with um, some of the other stuff, like the Wings of Glory and all that stuff. Okay. Western Front, large, oversized Texas. Wow. Beautiful. Oh, and you want to talk about oversized Texas? We're going to, we should go pop on over, uh, taking a look. So I was, um, so one of the side things for my game um, doing there is to start looking into, um, I don't know how, yeah, let's just go one after the other here on my notes because I'm going to get all screwed over, uh, screwed up here. Um, bit of the chronology thing. I haven't talked about that much, have I? Um, hold on. I'm going to stop the screen for just a second so, until I get to where I need to get to. I'm going to grab a link and then we'll go there. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know what? I'm just on the offside here. We'll just zippity dip quick. Uh, if there's any interesting things that I found this week, I know I haven't been talking to you guys much about what's been going on with the chronology um, uh, the Atlas of the week, like, you know, the week that was, I, even though I haven't, like I've said before, even though I'm not, uh, mentioning it to you guys, I'm still writing it out every week, uh, because I need to have it into my head. Uh, Harold Bosma says, yes, I've heard of it. Big hexes. They did look darn big. Um, and actually you mentioned that before me, Andrew Mike mentions, he was probably uh, answering your question. Um, I'm just going to quickly look to see if I noticed anything, um, you know, one thing I am starting to notice, though, also in the chronology, which I guess maybe makes sense, is there's a heck of a lot more political um, uh, uh, entries than there was before. Um, yeah, I usually I put like a little asterisk if I think, oh, this uh, I found this interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, Grand Duke Nicholas got appointed the Viceroy of the Caucasus because now uh, the Tsar has taken over. Um, everything kind of thing as we know and a, a lot of people were saying mm, probably not a good idea dude uh um yeah that was on the 5th of september um the russians are, f are fighting back a little bit in galicia they uh retook tarnopol way down uh, near cernowitz uh but um as far as I know, the, uh, the Germans are still pu pushing back. They've, uh, I mean, that was what, two weeks ago, they took, uh, Novo Georgiesk, um, uh, one of the fortress towns near Warsaw, uh, Warsaw is gone. Uh, they're now, uh, towards, uh, Vilnius, I think, uh, Riga's, you know, it's a mess as we know. Um, Southern front, Let's see if I see anything interesting that I put a little asterisk on here. Um, this I, I don't know what in the world this is. It says Asiatic and Egyptian theaters, uh, September 8th, situation at, and I'm going to have to look it up. I don't know what it is. Is I S P A H A N reported threatening Isafan reported uh, threatening. And it's in the Asiatic and Egyptian theaters, according to the chronology uh, thing, but I have no idea what, uh, what it's referring to, but I would like to go and find out. Um, and then uh, on the 4th of September, the uh, the Allen liner Hesperian was torpedoed off the Irish coast um, and 32 people died on that. Um, I think if there's anything else I saw interesting. Where's the political bit? Uh, do you guys, I just find this, I, I know it's, uh, I just find it a, a, a really cool name. I mean, uh, the Turco, the Turco Bulgarian Frontier Convention. That was an actual convention that occurred uh, back on the 6th of September. It just sounds so, just so out there. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go to my uh, link so that way we can, uh, I don't get too uh, sidetracked. So this is some, uh, some, some uh, things I thought I found uh, relatively interesting. Or should we go to the, yeah, let's go to this because it kind of led up to, I'll try to share it, um, present the screen. So this is what's been, um, there we go. And I'm using paintbrush so that way I can hopefully use my, and you guys can hopefully, hopefully you guys can see that little red dot. I hope uh, the green dot, sorry. So um, I'm going to hide this bit so you guys can't see this. So um, this is, uh, well, as you can see here around Persia, the West uh, in Mesopotamia, a scan of uh, the Develt Creek map. That's why you can see the funny cutout uh, where you're supposed to cut and, and attach it somewhere else. The reason why I have these up here is because as I was starting to um, take a look at the chronology, uh, like to start uh, 
finding out what was going on historically back in November 1914 to start uh, finding out what was going on with the other conflict zones. Um, yeah, you're on full on, so I got the full, not me in the, in the picture here. Um, in the world, so that way I can start figuring out what was going on in my in my mini game. I don't know how I did this, but when I started getting into the Ottoman fronts, uh, the uh, in Persia and uh, in uh, in Palestine and whatnot, for my game, I started to uh, I completely forgot that the Brits had already invaded uh, Persia over here in no in November. And I, my game was not set up that way. Luckily, I haven't done anything, but it was like, okay, there's a bit of a wrinkle. And I'm not going to get into what, uh, how I'm going to incorporate. I'll talk about that in a separate video. I don't want to hog the um, uh, hog the live stream for this stuff. But I did want to show um, little bits of like already how far. So this is by no, mid-December. No, um it, historically that the British have already, so back in early November, it was like right off the bat, uh, practically uh, as soon as um, the Ottomans uh, bombarded uh, those Russian uh, port towns in the Black Sea, then Russia declared war uh, on the Ottomans, then the Brits did, um, and then, you know, annexed Cyprus in like 3.8 seconds, and then uh, uh, then decided to uh, secure the oil fields here. Darn it! I can't remember the name of the uh, the uh, the company Anglo Anglo British Oil Company. I think would ends ends up becoming morphed into the British Petro Petroleum Company at some point later on. Anyway, so the Brits uh, start using the Indian Expeditionary Force D. I do believe. They land some troops here in uh, in Fowl and easily overtake it um, and uh, also take Basra, I think, practically without a fight, if I'm not mistaken. But this is like, again, uh, fresh baked out of the oven in my head. And by mid-December, they've taken Kerna. And historically, I think keep on trucking, not right off the bat, as far as I know, end up somewhere i'm not sure if it's like 13 kilometers or 30 kilometers so i'd be about around here if it was 30. um but and i'm not sure if it's the town it's called sesaphon or something but the brits get this close uh, you guys probably know more about this than i do um uh, but that's where the turks have uh, the ottomans have really really dug in and uh pushed the brits back and that's where they decided to and uh, and the ottomans uh you know, chase them all the way back down to here. And that's where the Brits decided to, you know what, we'll hunker down here and uh, hope for the best. And that's where they got uh, surrounded. And you guys have heard about that, the siege of Kut and all that. And and uh, the Indian troops having to eat horses and all that stuff and a zillion things. But so this is, uh, so I am going to incorporate this into my, into my game. And it's, uh, oh, I love the narrative that's going to be uh, popping into it. But I did want to show you this, that by already, by mid-December, um, and yet again, it's a, another thing of what they call a mission creep or whatever, um, you know, hindsight stuff. Uh, they were saying that the original objective was to just secure the oil fields. And uh, they had done that uh, by up to here. And yet, uh, you know, some people were like, hey, we can get the Baghdad and, you know, and well, they do eventually, but it sucks a lot of a lot of troops uh, this way, or at least, well, Indian troops. So there we go. I just wanted to show you this bit, and then actually we're going to go off to the side here because I'm going to tell uh, explain to you why I'm having an issue with. Um, I'm going to go full on size for this, but I'm going to have to present. So why I'm having uh, I'm not saying a full uh, an issue, I guess if you want to call it that is um, I'm finding some discrepancies with the order of battle in the Osmanli Harbi uh, module in Dervelt Creek. And so I'm starting to, I don't need to get super specific, but I'm not, I'm using, I'm lo going to looking for other sources. Now I'm not going to rely specifically, specifically on this and you're going to see why, at least I think you can hopefully see why. So I'm going to present the screen. I know you're about to go there. Um, Charles Latore, I know that you're going to still be, you said you're still going to be listening on your mobile, but I uh, just want to wish you a safe trip there to the airport and back and all that. Um, so there we're going to go. So you guys can see that, I hope. Um, 
Oink. All right. You can see that? Good. Excellent. So if we go to here, so this is the, um, the duration game. So I was going to start taking a look to see what the forces are. Because I was like, oh, darn it. I didn't realize that um, the Brits had already landed troops and so on and so forth. And I had to start trying to figure out how I'm going to incorporate that in my mini game. Now, take a look at this guy here. The third in, uh, um, uh, the first, I guess, Sinai. I guess I, I've been looking for the abbreviation uh, things and they're not listed in the, I haven't found any of them in the Osmondley Harvey one. Anyway, so this uh, infantry regiment, the first Sinai, I guess, is here in November uh, 1914. Now, if we go up towards here, sorry, hopefully I'm not making you sick. So if we go all the way up to the Russian one in the Caucasus. Like I said, oh, sorry, I hope I'm not making you sick. Like I said, I'll try to Ottoman set up, hopefully. And there we go. There's the 1st Sinai Infantry Regiment, also in here. So what in the world, why are you there? And then on a different map, where are you, 1st Sinai? Duration game, there you are. That's in 2004 on a different map. The other one's in 2011. That's why it's like, okay, I'm not, I can't rely on, um, on this. So I'm going to get rid of this, and then I'm going to. Oh, goody! You guys can still see this, I think. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, so that means I can just grab some link stuff, and we can go from there. I can get rid of Kaiser Wilhelm. We don't have to show you anymore, and then I can just go from uh, link to link, and. Um, show you guys some nice stuff that I thought uh, you guys might be interested in taking a look at. So the first one's going to be, where are you? This one here. So that's uh, where I'm going to start getting some information from. And you guys can see that. Good. And please let me know if you find it too, uh, the screen too small or anything. So like I said, all these are in all the link. Uh, this is all um, in the links there in the live stream. So I'm going to go through here. I just found this. I found this this morning. So I'm going to start looking this up as well. And that will be a sec, um, another source of information for me. But this looks fantastic. I'm really, look at this. I, I love these pictures. I love this picture with the, uh, the captured uh, Ottoman officers. Some of them not looking too impressed. <laughs> ah, that's for sure. Okay, so that one's, I got that one done, goody. And then we'll grab, a, and I'll just keep on grabbing my links. So, uh, Harold Bosma, please uh, let me know if, um, oh, yes, that's why I can't wait to get to it. Actually, we're going to get right off to the back, because you were saying about big hexes. Now, did I put it in the, um, Charles Latour, I unfortunately got lots of shopping to do, too. Um, well, uh, uh I hope you have a wicked day, uh, regardless, Charles, and that you do get to get back to, and hopefully I can show this to you before you do split. Dave Schroeder hand drew his maps in 20 millimeter hexes. I repeat, hand drew them. Sweet Jesus jumping. Too bad we don't have a giant uh, shot of it, but uh, there, look at this. Can you see that? What the hell? Anyways, he says, yeah, around 2000, I offered to sell people the complete set of hand-drawn maps, printed off full color copies of eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. At the time I had the offer set at $2,000 for the complete set. There actually were some takers. You darn right there would have been. Uh, here's an example of a hand-drawn map. Oh, my God, man. This just blows me away. When you, oh, yeah, yeah. But this, wait, do you see this? Harold Bosman. History is a peninsula. Um, thanks, uh, Harold Bosman. I'm going to have to go and look that up then. Um, look at that, guys. So he's 
the little bugger has things that we would love to have, or at least I would love to have, that are missing. And I can't grab this. It, it won't make it any bigger. But look at that, guys. He's got all of Ireland, the whole bloody thing. The Asanzo battles. Uh, Harold Bosma, um, is that what the Asanzo battles, uh, what are you talking um, You're going to have to uh, uh, expand a bit. But look at that. Oh, my God. 20 millimeter hexes, Harold Bosma. So there you go for your supersized hexes. That's way bigger than any hexes. Um, or maybe no. What is it that, uh, and yet again, I was talking about the other rule systems, like the blind swords. Is that what it's called? The, the Civil War thing where multiple people use the same um, uh, rule system, but uh, it's not the same people. I think Italian front. Yeah, well, absolutely, man. Um, the Assange, it, what are you, uh, yet again, what are you referring to? Is, in the, is that a title of a game or we should look it up or whatever? But uh, I would love to have those that set up. South of Trieste. Oh, thank you. Look at that, man. Look at that. Oh, this area here. Ah, now I'm cluing in. Lord have mercy, I'm slow. Jesus Murphy. Okay, anyways, that to me would be gold. Oh, my gosh. And it still just freaks me out that that's that human being. Um, uh, Istria Peninsula, thank you, uh, Meandry Mike. And thank you, Harold Bosma, for knowing what the heck was going on here. Okay, so this is, I'm going to show you this one. And hopefully you guys can see the little thing. I had no idea about these guys. So when I w want to start doing my uh, newspaper there for um, and popping it onto the community tab, I wanted to uh, find the font um, that uh, the Wipers Times used, um, which I still have not been able to find. But uh, as you can see, this is their recreation. Not bad. Um, and that's a, a, an original. This is what I would like to show you guys. Um, is this little video. I had no idea. Did you guys know about these things called the monotype system? It says you would says here, historically using the monotype system, you would type out text on a monotype keyboard which looked a bit like a massive typewriter. The keyboard would produce a roll of perfor perforated paper tape, which would then be fed into a separate machine, the monotype caster, which would cast at considerable speed, brand new individual metal letters set line by line. I'm like, what? This blows me away. So we're gonna make this full screen. And hopefully you guys can still see this. It's only 20 second, 26 seconds. But watch this. Look at the letters. Oh, wow. Okay, how do I get out? Uh, hit escape. Uh, that just blows me away, guys. I, I absolutely just knocked my socks off. I know. Uh, Mandarin Mike just knocked my socks off. Uh, I mean, to me, that's, you know, what? 19th century 3D printing, you know, in a way. It's just incredible. Um, yeah, so uh, I just, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we got that one done. I'm really happy. Um, um, and we should go up. I should go down so that way I don't miss. Oh, yeah, this one I thought was really nice. Uh, it's just, if, like I said, it's all in the sources. Just another wonderful human being out there. And this guy um, just had set up a blog and... Uh, Right, getting right into uh, World War One, and um, this goes on. Just like I said, it. Uh, there's actually one thing that he mentions. It's here's your paths to glory. Um, it's uh, coming up, and the Great War. If you guys know anything about this, I've heard of it, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Richard Borg, interesting. Um, looks neat. I certainly would like to play that. Um, Looks like, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind. It's uh, not this, it's this one here. 
Um, so I'm going to be looking that up maybe this afternoon. Um, hardcore history. Um, I had uh, never heard of this, so that'll be nice to uh, take a look at. And yeah, I still have not watched this. Um, Harold Bosma, it's like Memoir 44. And there's a, uh, I've not played that as well, Harold Bosma. Have you played it? Um, I have not. I know it's uh, uh, super popular. Um, but this I'm, I'm very curious about. I've heard about it uh, several times. I just have not uh, bit because it's, I have to pay money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't, I'm like, screw you. I want to spend money on other things. So, and this, okay, so we got that one done and we're doing not too bad. Um, yes, I play with my nephews. Cool. And this guy. And by the way, I hope to God I'm not driving you guys mental. Uh, it's just because I am a little bit on an airplane, a World War I airplane modeling kick. Kick. So there will be uh, uh, Harold Bosma, but said in World War I. Really? Oh, I mean, I see what you mean. Uh, uh, my, uh, the other one is in, I thought maybe you were morphing Memoir 44 into uh, playing uh, uh, World War I. If you are, that's even better. Um, I played Borg's Great War, but if not, I have it. Okay, but if not played it yet. Oh, God, you lucky bugger, man. Um, now, why did I have you on here? Must have been for gallery or something, hyperscale. Yeah. No, it's because it, that's right. I wanted you guys to, uh, this is it, the online resource for aircraft and armor modelers. I think I was looking at some pictures and I went, wait a flipping minute. I better show this. I better, um, because there's a lot of you guys out there that um, are into, you know, uh, well, reference, for example. Um, maybe there's all kinds of things you guys want to take a look at. Um discussion groups, so on and so forth, but it's not just, um, you know, uh, World War One pictures and all that type of stuff, but I thought maybe you guys would want to take a look, but was there any, eh, let's just grab one, holy moly, wow, are you flipping kidding me? Look at the detail on that. Jesus. I don't know if I don't, I can't expand upon them, but uh, Jesus, hopefully you guys can see that. Wow. Oh my God. Eh? I just, pardon me. It's like, is that a painting or like what in the world? Charles Latour, got to be hot again. High eighties, probably nineties. Oh, Jesus Murphy. Um, yeah, that's pretty icky. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of these. That one, now we're back to that. Okay, so we saw, I showed you that one. Um, this I didn't realize, guys. Maybe you guys know about this. I had no idea that the phonetic al alphabet has changed over time. Um, I want to learn the one that they did in World War I, obviously. I couldn't care less about the one now. But uh, it's like Alpha, Butter, Charlie, Duff. Ed, Edward, well, there we go. And then it changed over to this one, down to that one, and so on and so forth. And But I'm like, screw that. I don't want to learn. I want to learn the one way up there, not um, not, uh, not the one everybody's learning now. Manny Mike says, I've been resisting getting into models, but I did just order a 1-72 to Napoleonic baggage wagon train. You son of a bitch. Uh, Charles Latore, warp speed, gentlemen. Good luck to you, Charles Latour. And the reason why I say you son of a bitch, man, you're making, we're going to talk here. I'll, I'll pop this off so you can look at me for a little bit. Um, the reason why I say that is because I was at the, um, the hobby shop yesterday. And we, we are going to talk about that again. Uh, the reason why I went to the hobby shop yesterday is because I did end up using my spray gun and it was spitting a little bit. Thankfully, I uh, practiced on paper, not on an actual model. And I was like, why is this spitting? And I thought, okay, it's probably not um, uh, mixing properly with the, and it was old primer. So I went to, got, uh, I purchased some brand new primer, as you know, from last week um, and diluted it even more. Uh, still, I, I think it's been sitting there for a long time. I didn't mix it well. I tried it, I tried it with some uh, deco art paint, uh, diluted that as well, got a better result, still spat a bit. So I went, you know what? We're going to A, um, I'm probably going to be seeing Rob tomorrow, and we're going to go to that model warehouse place. 
So I'll get Rob to show me how to properly prime with um, with a, a spray gun, a spray can, even though I said I would not get into that again. I went onto YouTube, went uh, watched a um, thing on Humbrol, uh, how to prime with a spray can. And I went, you know what, we're going to, and I could see the effect. Uh, it looked so much better than mine. Uh, Meandering Max says, I had a spray can that was spitting yesterday. I had to throw it away. There you go. Um, and I went, you know what, you got to, and I noticed that, I mean, originally when I was doing my brushing with the airbrush, uh, the Vallejo airbrush stuff, uh, primer, it was okay. But I think it's been sitting there, like I said, for so long, it's just not working. What a difference. What a difference. So I, uh, they, they had the Tamiya, uh, little can of Tamiya spray paint stuff, pick that up. What a difference. Oh my God. Uh, so I'm like, you know what, Chris, use the proper tools and read the instructions, do light spray. And the, uh, I was watching one of the guys said, just do a spray, let it bite, come back again and, and get another one or whatever. So I'm, gonna, I'm doing that. I picked up a spad, uh, eight, uh, plane, uh, Harold Bosma, you seem to know, know a bit about world war one planes, which is neat. Um, <clears throat> so I was, I did find out that I really want to do an Ottoman plane and I did, um, uh, did find that the Ottomans did use it, but I think it was probably more the Turkish, uh, not the Ottomans, like after the war, that the Turks probably used the Spad 8. Reason why, that was a pretty late plane in the war. And from what I heard, by the time the plane, uh, by the time the war had ended, there was already like thousands upon thousands of orders on back order that got canceled for that plane. So there's probably a lot of a lot of them that were like, hey, can we get rid of these planes at a half decent deal? Uh, Harold Boss, my little spat is familiar. Cool. Um, so that's, and uh, so that's what I, I was going to say on a side note. Remember, I think I was mentioning last week when I went to the, uh, hobby store and I noticed that, uh, some of the world war one models had vanished and I was like, Hmm, maybe there's somebody, uh, another world war one modeler, a uh, purchase modeler. There is because I noticed, uh, another one gone. And like I was, uh, why I'm saying now, uh, you son of a bitch, or whatever I called uh, nasty wor uh, words, I called you, man. You like, is because I so want to get just an ambulance truck, or a normal truck, or a World War One vehicle that's not a flipping tank. Uh, there's even I saw the hat uh, one to seventy two. They even have a a pigeon uh, truck with a pigeon coop. Oh my gosh, I, that type of stuff I really want to get. So I can completely understand. Uh, Man, you Mike, why you want to get a 1 to 72 Napoleonic baggage wagon train? 100%. Um, so that's that. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go back to the present so I can start showing the. Um... Uh, so, like I said, I would love to learn, um, learn that bit. And I'm going to grab uh, another whatever. Um, this is the seminars. Now, why would I have you? And we'll just go to that one straight up. Uh, and like I said, sorry again, if uh, Harab uh, Bosma used to have all the steel models from Wings of War, the car-driven World War I fighter game, but sold everything. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And you're like, uh, had industries has tons of those odd support vehicles. Really? Okay. So please let me, well, we'll be talking about that later. Um, so... Yes, I think that's the reason why I wanted to bring this up, the seminar uh, here. And this is at the uh, National World War I Museum website. But this is for aviators, uh, World War I aviators. So I don't know if these guys actually fly these uh, uh, recreation planes. But I wanted you guys to take a look at uh, another link. Like I said, that, but this one's actually going to occur there. I'd love to go and take a look. Um, I, don't, I think it's, a, it's just a straight up talk, as you can see here. It would be like so over my head, but um, boy, I'd love to just sit off in the back corner somewhere. I mean, I might say almost bought a Napoleonic ambulance wagon, but resisted. Oh, that would be neat to see from a distance uh, and, and not in real life. That's for <laughs> sure. Holy Lord, lifting. Okay, so we got that one. Um, another link. This one I thought you guys may, well, I think you're going to. Oh, damn it. Is Charles the Torah gone? Shoot. There's, ah, uh, there's one uh, particular um, 
uh, thing I wanted it, wanted him to see. So this one there, uh, you can see this. This is uh, the reason why I, I, I went to here and I just I'm letting you guys take a look at it is uh, if you guys ever like want to get into more type of stuff, you can compare aircraft, so on and so forth. It's nuts. Uh, I'm not obviously didn't get into uh, I only went to their home page so I could show you guys. I'm not it's not what I'm in, into, but I was able to um, find um, all the planes that the Ottomans used in World War One and so on and so forth. It was just great. So I thought maybe you guys would want to, uh, well, it's in the links if you guys ever want to go. And it's not just about airplanes, as far as I know. Um, so you got that. It's, darn it, we're going to get to it now. I think this is the one, that, uh, the link I wanted to show, uh, the picture I wanted to show Charles of Torah, because it has something to do with Italy. Everything, every time now. Ah, we talk about Italy, and Moe's like, oh, yeah, Charles of Torah. Oh, Lord of mercy. So, um the SPAD, uh, uh, well, I've, I also picked up another uh, SOP with Camel. I did pick up, a, like I said, a SPAD 8 from Academy Games. They're only five bucks Canadian for me. So I wanted to do this paint scheme here, this one here, for um, a Canadian um, that uh, I guess is super, I don't know about him, but uh, I guess he's a super uh, uh, famous. Uh, but that was his first uh, first paint job that he did for the sop with camo. I thought, oh, that looks quite nice. And as I kept on trucking along, looking at all the little pictures, and then I saw this funky little thing here. I was like, what the heck is this? And then they start mentioning that um, that, that thing there, um, where did I find it? Uh, that's it here. Uh, one further detail was the little red devil on the right hand Vickers gun. In the past, this has been described as a tin cutout. However, research by Andy Kemp shows this to be a three-dimensional radiator mascot hood, or, hood ornament. This radiator mascot was also carried by at least three other Italian theater camels. So I thought, oh, that was uh, neat to hear, but uh, neat to see um, was that thing. And I would love to know if um, <clears throat> there's any model, model kits out there that... Um, you know, get, get to that level of detail where they're like, yeah, we, we included that. All right. So I did that bit. I showed you that bit. Um, I, this I thought was totally cool. And I'm going to show it to you in a minute. So I've been reading, um, oh gosh, it's, it's, well, not the whole book because it's uh, not interested in the whole book is good. You can see that. I've mentioned this before. I picked it up a, a, a while back. Uh, what if the world's most foremost uh, historians imagine what might have been? And I'm reading the section on 1914. And Robert Cowley, the editor, is doing the biggest section of it. And it is such, I just find it, uh, um, I'm just captivated uh, by, the, by his writing style. It's just really darn good. Uh, like he'll even say things in the middle of, uh, of it. Um, well, we'll get to that in a minute, you know, that type of stuff. And I'm like, when, when, when an author says that type of stuff, I just love it. Uh, it is just, uh, yeah, I'd love to um, uh, maybe talk about it at, at some point about uh, all the what ifs uh, that he mentions in the 1914 thing. It is just fantastic. This is the cool thing. So I want, I, I really like Robert Cowley. I want to go and find out more about, uh, and I was like, maybe I'll find and see if uh, Robert Cowley um, has anything on YouTube? Well, kind of. And then, lo and behold, Coffee with Kilroy. Kilroy was here, as you uh, a lot of you people know. Um, did a did a video of it a year ago. So I was like, oh, fantastic! I get to uh, watch this and find out what uh, he thought about the book. So I thought that was quite neat. Um, so we're going to go to that. I just love the way things can just go around and around and around. Um, so I've been watching this film. Um, I've only, oh, not even, I don't even think I've got to uh, 30 minutes yet, as per usual. Um, but I wanted to show it to you. It's, uh, I'm watching it free on YouTube. It's all in Gaelic. I'm not going to, yeah, see, I haven't got even to 30 minutes. Uh, let's see if we can find 
um, a trailer for it. I don't see why they're not going to let us. Now, it's all in Gaelic. Obviously, they have it. It's uh, What I find nice about it, guys, is um, here, we're going to put it on and I'll shut up. I mean, no can see either moon, cadu, pradain vaur and vaur a can nerfo. Damach cavalachi yentid camry. Kelwe. Dango such and photo kelwe. Kavyander, a co fly tree. I don't pick it, I've angled cat. Brandu har lies. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Milor and cream. What are you going to do? Milor and amlada nerfing. Cotra pioni a can havyander. Marchog Iesi an Suidianis Machangen chi I am diffin a tuan an erbyn y cryf I am diffin gwirionedd an erbyn celwydd Machangen chi Fechgyn ifanc festiniog am erionis I am lad o blaid hyddid eich blad Ag i warchod diogelw eich taelioed Pwy fydd y cyntaf honno chi, i ymuno? Parau honno chi, sydd yn barod i ymuno ar unwaith? Bydd i brys, Gref. Ac i roi'n dywydd cadw eri, os bydd rai. Ac i'n dweud y gyd dros ag ni brochi, Tansi. All right. Stop. Yeah, it didn't more. It wasn't much of a trailer for that one. But it's all in, well, as you can see, it's all in Gaelic or whatever. Um... It's based on a true story. I guess that guy was a poet. Um, so I, I, what I'm finding, like I said, well, I haven't even watched 30 minutes of it yet, but it's, uh, Charles Latoura, uh, Mike, you know, resistance is futile from Starbucks drive-in, um, is a nice, to see, I guess you're using your little, uh, dig, uh, voice dictation thing there, Charles. Um, I'm, I'm, what I'm liking is, well, he's, they, f uh, flash forward to where, you know, he's in the trenches and whatnot. And then they go back to the, I guess is the price. I don't know. Like it, it's jumping around, but I'm, I'm finding it's like, it's part war movie, uh, part, uh, poetry, like, like uh, lots of times, uh, it's just, uh, they're reading out his, uh, poems, but it's all in Gaelic or whatever. And, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I love listening to other languages. I, I just find it. It's so musical and everything like that. So I, I it's good. There's a love story. It's quite uh, quite an interesting little love story in the fact that, uh, you know, she's older and then uh, she's thinking that maybe he doesn't want to marry her because um, she's older. But he it, has a lot of other things, but he's worried about not having enough money. But I'm thinking on the offside, maybe actually deep down in his head, he really doesn't want to marry her because she's older. So it's, it's all these neat little things going on. So I'm like, why not? And it's, it, you know. All right, anything to do with World War One? Let's keep it on trucking. Um, and then I think I'm running out of whatever's, which is fine because we're. I am the only other. Uh, yeah, she's not going to mind because it's all part of the. Um, it's all part of. Uh, it's free advertising for her, for Christ's sakes. So, uh, uh, meandering Mike mentioned to me Fiverr. Um, uh, a thing where uh, you can get uh, for not that much money, you can get certain services done uh, if you need something uh, translated or whatever. And part of my thing for the narrative stuff I wanted to do, uh, William Eric says the Welsh are the closest to the English in both geography and ideology of all the Celtic ethnicities of the British Isles. And William Aarons, are you not? Uh, I don't know, but you've but just from that little bit of uh, from what I've been uh, listening to. Gosh, like I don't know uh, uh, about all the connections, but my God, it's got a, a lot of uh, Viking type sounds to it. Or am I mistaken or whatever? Uh, maybe I'm out to lunch with that type of stuff. I don't know. But um, anyways, this. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna present the screen. So 
uh, I think I've mentioned before that I wanted to uh, really push the boat out in some ways of things that I would like to do with uh, my narrative. And one of the things I'd like to do with um, for the Russian nurse thing is occasionally I'd like to have maybe um, a, someone actually do a voiceover or whatever of Zoya Popova. So let's see her little thing. And I think she sounds kind of cool. Hello. Hi. Hey, everybody. My name is Masha or Maria Bond. Bond is my last name. And yes, I am a secret agent voiceover bureau. I do voiceovers for explainer videos, ads, commercials, you name it. Movies, audiobooks, phone systems, anything. I can speak to your audience in a conversational and natural tone. I know that I have a strong Russian accent. And maybe that's just what you need for your project. If you need your English script translated into Russian, I can translate it too. I can't wait to work with you. Just shoot me a message. I respond really fast. Cool. Anyways, I don't know about you guys, but I was like, she's, yeah, she's like, oh, I've got a strong Russian accent. I'm like, you're darn right. That's exactly what I want. I don't want someone that's got a half, half assed um, Russian accent for crying out loud. That's it, guys. It's about 10 55. Um, um, yeah, I really not much else to say, really. Um, uh, what I'm going to do for the what I've been doing for my game um, was, like I said, I'm just going to start taking a look at the Ottoman uh, forces and trying to figure out what, uh, who goes where and what. I'm not going to get, I'm not too worried about the specificity uh, the way Dervelkri is, even though I am going to get that way when I start doing the front or doing that combat type of stuff um like uh, um uh harold bosma thanks uh you're you're welcome man um is uh like for example I, the the ottoman fourth army i think that was in uh mesopotamia at the time and the way Develkrieg is setting him up, he's got like the regiments every five seconds, but I'm not really worried about that. I just want to make sure that I've got the right, okay, who are, what were the divisions and there, and then I'll, I'll break them apart. So I can look that up myself, uh, take a long time, um, but that's okay. Um, other than that, like I said, I've been uh, taking a look at other conflict, conflict zones uh, historically in November to try to pop it into my thing. Like, for example, like right now in November 1914, there's the, uh, the Battle of Coronel there in South America. And then I think at the beginning of December is going to be what the Battle of Falkland Islands, where uh, is it Spree that gets it? Is that the, the, the German uh, Admiral Spree that gets it from uh, the British guy that comes in uh, later on? Like Yet again, you guys probably know more about this than I do. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm starting to look at all the other conflict zones, trying to like right now the siege of Sing Tao. Yet again, something you guys probably know more. Well, obviously, I can guarantee you know more than I do about that um, in China. So I want to uh, take a look. So start trying to integrate more and more of what's going on, so that way I can make it plausible as I go uh, go into my uh, into the game. As well as I've mentioned before, I want to start looking at other rule systems to take a look at how they do. Oh my gosh. That was another thing. If anybody knows of any game out there um, that is not just, a, yeah, they've put a couple of units off to the side. Uh, any type of focus on the Caucasus, uh, any focus whatsoever, a little bit more than just a ha um, half-assed version of it, uh, uh, what I mean is, like, I'm going to go look up uh, my World <clears throat> my, my world War One game upstairs uh, from Decision Games. Ironically, the very first world war one of that scale i guess you could say that i i tried to play um i'm sure they're going to have more like you know what i mean token forces or it's not going to be represented the way i would like to take a look at the caucuses but i would like to start seeing what other who else had any and like i mean take a look at that we were looking um on bgg there we've been doing it off and on over the months that guy um that's doing the Romania uh, Blitzkrieg in the East uh, 1916 game that's coming out. He's looking for a publisher still. And we were uh, all going, ooh, nice maps. Um, 
that type of focus is there something like someone else someone doing something up there to, you know or Zerum and uh Sarah Kamash and all that stuff I'd like to I'd like to know and see what else like who, who uh, uh different uh slant on it that's it um thank you thank you Mary Mike I'm gonna go and uh look that up <clears throat> um so what else uh oh my god I don't, I, you probably don't get to uh, Harold Bosma because of the hours. May, and maybe you do. Uh, I'm not sure. But it was so flipping nice to see Not Jay pop, up, pop back up on, on Wednesday nights. Uh, may, maybe tonight. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, but that was cool to see, uh, um, just to see the regular whatevers. Uh, yeah, uh, Harold Bosma, Not Jay shows on it Wednesday at 9 my time. So what's that? One two o'clock in the morning your time, so either really early or really late or something your time. But uh, yeah, it's just a bunch of people. Um, well, I think we've mentioned it before. Just just helping each other out game wise. Basically, that's it. Um, just feeding off of each other's enthusiasm and, and enjoyment of uh, gaming, modeling the whole nine yards. That's it. Uh, Willie Manners, thank you, sir. And uh, yet again, like I said, um, uh, we'll chit chat about. Uh, getting you uh, getting you up here that'd be totally cool there's a yeah we'll do some interesting stuff um her boss me yeah, if i'm awake early i'll tune in um yeah and yet again he it sometimes does a saturday night thing but i'm uh, just going to say harold bosma the vibe is so flipping nice uh on that channel um that's all i got to say it's just so welcoming so inviting um uh, it's just uh yeah, there's just no pretense, none of that garbage, none of the, whoa, we know better than you garbage, you know, that, it's just whatever. Um, okay, thank you guys. Hope you guys have a fantastic uh, time. It was super fantastic to see you. I really, I really mean that. It's, uh, it's really, it's, yeah, it, I don't know, it makes it worthwhile. Jeepers jumping. Okay, thanks again, guys. Bye.